Hi guys, welcome to my channel. It's Darcy's Mixed Media and I am doing some experimenting in this video. I've sped it up so that hopefully it won't take all day to watch. <laughs> Although I just realized I probably should have sped it up more so I don't have to talk for 30 minutes. <laughs> Anyway, I'm doing some experimentation. Uh, our Mixed Media collab challenge this month for May is Bring on the Blooms. And of course, blooms could mean flowers. Um, although I think in our group, you're not going to see a lot of flowers. <laughs> we like to try to think outside the box. Um, so we were coming up with ideas the other day in PM Artist Studio, uh, one of their lives. Um, the one on Tuesday, uh, May 3rd, if you want to go look at that. I think that was the one. Yeah, that was the one. Um, and so, you know, Patricia was making notes about different th things. Was it Tuesday or was it Sunday? It might have been Sunday, April 30th. I don't know. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, we were coming up with ideas, you know, like algae blooms, bloomers, um, just anything related to the word bloom and I had all kinds of ideas that I wanted to do like um, you know like maybe do flowers and do like a pop-up book oh, I just threw away that prayer that prayer sucks that was my very first prayer I got by the way squirrel <clears throat> anyway so I had a lot of ideas but it would have meant I don't know having to learn how to do something and I think I'm, I think it's more fun for me to just uh, experiment and play with not knowing what I'm doing. Although I did look up, you know, how to do some stuff. And this is just me experimenting. I'm using my gel plate. I've got some clear, um, watered down clear gesso. The problem with that gesso was just too thick. And I didn't get it smooth on the plate. But, you know, I just keep playing and I get some interesting things. I don't get what I planned. But I guess some interesting things. And I think you can kind of see where I was going with the blooms when I add that alcohol, which is actually a mixture of 91% um, uh, isopropyl alcohol and 70% 70, 70 hand sanitizer. So, uh, the girl who came up with that is Sharon at Textured Texture Junkies. So it gives you the a little thicker alcohol. Uh, consistency to work with um, and sometimes that worked better and sometimes just the plain isopropyl, al isopropyl alcohol worked better but you can see when I put it on it kind of blooms so the idea um, that I originally had that I wanted to try was um, fractals uh, fractal kind of you know it goes off and kind of it's kind of blooms like a fractal bloom uh, if you, I'm going to try to remember to do the definition of what a fractal is in when I show the end project, which you would have seen the end project before you watch this, or you will have the opportunity to have seen the end project before you see this video. And I don't even know if I'm going to use anything from what I make in this video, but this is where it all started. Um, and then I wanted to figure out how to do it on the gel plate. And I figured, I thought if I used the clear gesso that I might be able to lift it up. But that wasn't going to work. So I just, in a, in a minute you'll see I just start taking lifts. So I don't, I get to play with the blooms and see the blooms and see things happening. But, oops, see I was trying to show you there. But I was off, my camera was off this whole time. So, sorry for that. You see most most of it's in frame. I was in frame at the beginning. I don't know what happened. And then I'm just kind of moving around, playing with it. And at some point, I decide to just go ahead and start taking pulls. And I have a whole bunch of pulls now. And I use my 5x7 gel plate. So if I ruined it, it wouldn't cost me an arm and a leg to replace it. Not that they're that expensive. But a gel plate feels expensive if you don't know if you're going to like it or not. Once you know you're going to like it, you're like, oh yeah, I'll spend the money on that because I know I'm going to use it. And, you know, so I've got two 8x10s, a 5x7, a 9x12, a 12x12, and an 8 inch round, and um, I want more. <laughs> but I do get, I think I get my money's worth out of them. I play with them a lot. I really enjoy having more than one so I can set some to dry or to ripen, as Patricia calls it. Oh, and I should apologize now to Mariah that I'm not straight. 
<laughs> that my picture's not straight. It's not even fully in camera. But I wanted you to try stay up close as much as possible. Just the different things happening on the plate. This is probably somewhat similar to what Texture Junkie's been doing. And I'm like, why is she putting so much stuff on the plate? Well, now I know why. You just can't stop. You just keep seeing things happening and you just want to keep playing. Um, so let's see. Um, that in that dropper is some watered down uh, white acrylic paint. And then that's that special sauce that Texture Junkies came up with. Uh, it's green because it's from the Dollar Tree and it's watermelon scented. Um, and I've used some, uh, let's see, I've used some acrylic inks and some, uh, fluid acrylics on here. All right, here we go. This is the first pull. It's my first try. See, and I just lift it straight up. I don't, I didn't press it or anything. Just lifted it straight up. You'll see these all again at the end. I bring them back. So don't worry too much about that. Um, let's see. Something's about to happen. I don't know. That's weird. Oh. Yeah, that one didn't come out great. I tried using the, um, took me a minute to find paper that I liked for this. Um, for lifting it, I, I'm not crazy about the Yubo paper because it, like, takes forever to dry. And you can't iron it flat if it didn't start out flat either. I mean, you can, but it's not really a good idea. Definitely have something that you don't care about underneath. But, because it took the paint, one of them, it took the paint off and went on my towel that I ironed on. Yes, I ironed my papers. Now, you do get to see a little bit more of the fractals and blooms on the Yupo paper. Um, especially if you do it right on the Yupo paper. But I did finally find somebody who was doing paint pours on paper. And they were using 140 pound watercolor paper. So, I will try that with, not paint pours per se. But I'm going to be starting with a, a layer of uh, paint. It'll be paint and some people use Floetrol. But I think, and I said latex on it, so I was like, well, that looks like it might have latex in it. So I didn't want to get Floetrol because I do have a latex allergy. So I, of course, I didn't look at the, the ingredients for the golden one. I got the most expensive one, but I won't need a lot. It was, it was $13 for eight ounces of the GAC 800 golden, which is coming in the mail today. So hopefully the next video after this one will have me playing with that. And some watercolor paper and whatnot. So that that orange is um, the quinacridone um, azo gold in the background that I used earlier. Oh, I also used some um, Tim Holtz Distress Inks refills. Those seem to react pretty well with alcohol as well, which was fun. See, I lift it straight up. I don't didn't push it or anything. I do start pressing down a little bit more after this one um yeah it's just a mess on there isn't it and then i'm adding some that's a good question what was that i think that was ink or alcohol ink the alcohol ink by itself doesn't do a lot because it doesn't like it doesn't um feather out because it probably has a binder in it but if you add a little bit more alcohol ink to it it does a little bit more and then when i use the inks which I didn't see what I just put on there. I should have paid more attention. That is spreading out like alcohol ink. Oh no, is that green? That actually might be the Tim Holtz Distress. I was trying to hold them under the thing so I could see what they were, but no, my camera's off, so I can't see. That was alcohol ink. So the first one I think was this Distress Reinker. It was uh, peeled paint, and the next one was the Stream Alcohol Ink, also Tim Holtz. So they're still getting some fun stuff and, you know, I'm still playing with it after I pull it up, adding some alcohol or alcohol ink or I don't know, just trying to do something. Oh, there, there I showed the alcohol ink. I must be about to put some on there. <laughs> yep. There I go. Added some alcohol ink and then added some alcohol too. So it would go a little, you know, it wouldn't dry so fast and go a little further with the, the with the blooms. Apparently, when you're getting the cells in paint pouring, they call that a bloom. But I don't want to get into paint pouring. That's just 
I don't have the space. <laughs> um, I, I've got enough things that I do. If I can, if I can do something on a gel plate, that makes me happy. So, you know, if something's happening on the gel plate here. Um, oh, and if you don't want to use Floetrol and you don't want to spend the money on the golden stuff to mix with paint, and I, I think for what I'm going to do in the next video, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. You can use Elmer's glue or Mod Podge. Um, might need to water those down a little bit to get the right consistency, but they can yellow or crack. Um, so the article I read said the golden was the best one. There's also a Li Liquitex product that can do the same thing. And also I ordered myself some new clear gesso that's going to be um, not so thick as the one that I tried using on here. I kept having a lot of lumpy bits. Oh, now I'm trying to make a spray. That's what's happening here. But my bottle's almost gone. I like having it in the... Um, I like having the solution, uh, the Texture Junkie solution, in the icing bottle because I have a little more control. But I also wanted to be able to just spray it on there too, which is what Sharon does. Uh, if you go check out Texture Junkies, uh, she's got a lot of gel plate play on uh, with uh, alcohol links. She's she's a little bit obsessed with that, kind of like I'm probably going to be obsessed with this for a little bit. So bear with me. Well, I'm sorry. I'm I'm make I'm trying to get some more. I'm here talking to you, and at the same time trying to get eke out the rest of this. Um, see if you're wondering what the sound was earlier that you didn't get to hear because I took out the sound. That's me trying to get as much of the um, hand sanitizer in this spray bottle as I can because I am easily distracted. So you know, but I, yeah, I wanted a spray so I could have a different effect. Um, with the same solution and I also had ordered some uh, stamp cleaner because you know I don't actually clean my stamp but I watched Miriam with a Y Marian, Miriam's Nature this is just me shaking the bottle um, Miriam's Nature she had tried out some stuff and she found that the stamp cleaner worked well I haven't had a chance to, so I got some so when I finally have my solution on my paper which is the one part white acrylic paint and one part uh which for me will be the gold and i think she used floetrol um you put that on and then you use your alcohol your inks not your acrylic inks and then i mix it with a little bit of the stamp cleaner and i'll see what happens that that's going to be in my next video after this one hopefully and i don't know which pages will actually end up in my final project uh, yeah, these are a little on the dark side, <laughs> not very springy, but that's okay. I'm good with that too. I'm just, it's more about the blooms and just having fun and experimenting and playing around and asking the question, what if, what if I tried this? What if I tried that? And that's what I'm, I'm doing in, in this little series. I don't know how many videos it will be, but. It's a little bit, a little series, or maybe it'll be something I do for the next year. Who knows? <laughs> maybe I'll become totally obsessed. Um, but yeah, I was just having fun with it. So let's see if I can determine exactly what I use in the upcoming. Um, no, here I am trying to get more of the, see, I'm trying to get every ounce of that, uh, hand sanitizer out mainly because I don't want to use the one we have upstairs because it stinks so bad I don't like the smell of it every time my husband put it on his hands I'm like oh do you have to come in the room with me that's so gross I don't know if that one's supposed to be scented or not but it's a big giant bottle and we have two of them so <laughs> well maybe if I do use it in this it'll get used up faster and I will have to but I don't want to have it right in my face it smells so bad so I might go back to the Dollar Tree and get some more. The doesn't smell like watermelon, but at least it's not quite as bad as the stuff upstairs. I mean, it says watermelon, hand, what cucumber and melon. It doesn't say watermelon. It has a picture of a watermelon. It's cucumber and melon scented hand sanitizer. All right. So what did I just put on there? Probably some of the watered down acrylic white paint. Unless I did the white acrylic ink. I've got both that I'm planning. Oh, and this is the Tim Holtz Distress. 
uh, paint, which is tarnished brass. And I'm going to have to get a close-up. Like, maybe do a short of a close-up. Because it's just kind of fun to watch close up what happens when you add the alcohol. It just keeps moving. You you can't see it as good this, this far away. Unless you're watching it on your TV. Then if you have like a 40 inch TV and you're watching it on there. Then you might be able to see all the fun stuff. Look I finally got myself a blower. I was tired of waiting. I'm like you know I need stuff to spread out. I need... <laughs> I'm not going to have much to pick up. Okay so that is I think that was the red oxide. Transparent red iron oxide golden fluid acrylic. Those are more expensive. Uh, they do last a while though because they're high, more highly pigmented. You don't need as much. And I don't know if you can see, but they do start to fractal into if, if the stuff they're in isn't too thick. So I'm really excited to try what I'm going to be doing with the um, the paint and the the golden. But if the golden doesn't come till Thursday or Friday, today is Wednesday. I might have to try some Elmer's glue because <laughs> I'm really anxious to try. Actually, I have another video I have to do. I promised I would show you guys how to make the splatter paper that I made for the April Makers collab. So that will probably be the next thing I do today. But I wanted to, while it was quiet in the house, I wanted to go ahead and get this voiceover done. <sighs> it's a lot of talking. I think I talk more in a voiceover than I do um, doing this. But... While I was doing that, I was watching YouTube videos and that, you know. And then I can speed this up double time and you only have to watch half of it. Of course, you can even watch it double time on YouTube, which will be four times the speed. And it will only take you 15 minutes to watch this instead of 30. And you can hear me sound like a little chipmunk. That one's a little bit interesting. I don't know. At some point, I think I'm like, okay, I don't have to keep adding stuff afterwards. It's interesting without it. I still don't know what I'm going to do for my project yet. I mean, you will have already seen it. But at this point in my life, in my time frame, in my timeline, I don't know yet what I'm going to do for my Makers collab, which will have come out on May 21st. So this video is probably coming out on May 22nd because I'm going to need to get it off my phone. Well, I'll probably schedule it before then. That's probably the other reason I'm doing this voiceover is so I can get the video off my phone. <laughs> I need the space so I can make another video. Oh, I can have another pool coming up. How do I know that? Because I can see the frames coming up. That one wasn't great. I think I added to it later with something else. Now I'm just trying to get off what's there as much as possible so I can kind of start fresh. And um, I think the next grouping might even be better stuff because I press more and... um. Yeah, I was trying to see if a pole would work, and I'm like, eh, it's not really worth it. So I'm adding more of the clear gesso, watered-down clear gesso, which, even though I mixed it as well as I could, I'm having, like, it was thick. She thick. She thick. So um, I had to, like, kind of press down and mush those out, and using the brush isn't the greatest thing to get a smooth layer, and it probably could have been, it's still a little thick for what I'm trying to do. So that was acrylic ink, Liquitex acrylic ink, and then adding the secret sauce or special sauce, or let's call it oh, TT sauce. That doesn't sound right. Te texture junk. Oh, TJ. TJ sauce? Is that okay? Texture junkie sauce? Um, Yeah, and I'm trying some stuff. I'm not liking it. So then I'm like just scribbling through it, which actually kind of made, once I do this, it kind of makes an interesting background for all the stuff I do from now on. So I'm going to add some more fluid acrylic of the red iron ox, the iron, transparent red iron oxide. Adding some more of the TJ sauce. Don't know what else to call it. It's this, a McDonald's might sue us if we call it special sauce. And it was a secret sauce, but it's not a secret anymore. And then the white, I, did I, if I pulled it from the left, the white is uh, the white acrylic ink. More of the Distress Paint Tarnish Brash. Spraying some of the TJ sauce. It's texture junkies. I can remember it's texture some uh ink, distress ink refill. Because you know, after we saw Louisa Heinzel do her thing, I had to go order some refills and I'm waiting for my distress oxides, which I want to try that with this with this too, with the alcohol ink and see what happens with the distress oxides. Um, yeah, this is mixed media at its finest, right? Because 
Uh, there's inks. There's acrylic ink. There's acrylic paint. There's distress inks. I'm showing the ones I did in the first part of the video, which you'll see again at the end of the video. So I don't know why I keep showing them. There's gesso. There's alcohol. Well, isopropyl alcohol. Probably be more fun if more alcohol was involved, but I don't really like alcohol is that weird that i don't like the taste of al like drinks like alcoholic drinks i just don't like fermented stuff um is pretty much i don't like tea either so i don't know see how like the when i spray it the the metallic comes up a little bit like it separates the top part and you can see the metallic for a second it doesn't keep doing that though oh, so, there you go the Ital the uh, alcohol solution the solvent so basically, I'm mixing medias or mediums with solvent to get some reaction. And the alcohol is the solvent, or if I use the uh, stamp cleaner, that's a solvent. And then the inks and the paints and the um, uh, the inks and the paints. So basically, the alcohol inks, the acrylic inks, the India inks, the acrylic paint, all that stuff. Those are the mediums. The uh, fluid acrylic paints. Just all different. Look at look at how wet that is. All right, that one I didn't press down, but I'm get it's I'm getting some interesting stuff. I'm like, look at that. That's gorgeous right there. Don't you just love that? I'm I'm this this second part. I'm liking even more. I probably could have just skipped the first part of the video and just shown you this part, but I don't know. I thought you might like to see my process. So yeah, that is so cool. I'll have to do a quick video. As some I don't know. I guess I show them. They're still a little wet when I show them at the end, but they're starting to dry. And then today, um, before I started voiceover for this video, I would I ironed them because I'm crazy like that. So that one is the stream. I that one doesn't have a cover on it right now. I lost the cover. No, that one's not stream. That one's sailboat blue. The stream I didn't don't have as much of that left, so I put the cover on the stream. And when I couldn't find the other cover, I just. I left it off the sailboat blue, but I don't think much evaporated. So that one doesn't have a cover right now until I can find it. I should do that now. No, I shouldn't. I'm doing a voiceover. I should do the voiceover and look for the cover later. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. But I was, uh, oh yeah, just random thoughts. I was glad that I did finally find someone who showed paint pours. Well, she was doing... It was sort of paint pours, but it wasn't like the big giant paint pour that you spin. It was a swipe. They call it a swipe. And But she showed, you know, that you can do it on paper. I, I just don't have the patience for it to dry. That's why I went to the... And I wanted to see if I could do it on a gel plate. But this, this one I'm doing is fun. This is probably, you know, closer to sort of kind of what Sharon's doing in Texture Junkies, except for she's not using the... Uh, paints and ink. She's just using alcohol inks, pretty much. Look at, see that spread? That's like a, that's what a bloom, I would call that a bloom, where it's like, it's a fra it's kind of going out as a fractal. I'm loving the colors in these. I do have other colors that I could use. I'll probably grab out some more alcohol inks to play with today. Uh, that is the white acrylic Licotex titanium white acrylic ink. And I just ordered some more white acrylic ink because I have a feeling I'm going to go through it. So I added, uh, I just ordered a Dr. Phil's, Dr. Phil, not Dr. Phil, the Dr. Whatever the acrylic inks, Dr. Martin. <laughs> That's more alcohol ink. So I just put, I'm trying to, oh, there we go. The 91% isopropyl alcohol is going on there now. Just kind of just, just, just <laughs> spread it on there. Just pour it on there like it's a thirsty desert. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kind of loving the reactions that are happening and it's just fun to watch. Even if I can't get exactly what's happened on the plate onto the paper, I'm still getting some interesting stuff happening on the paper. Like it's just cool. I don't know why I keep messing with it with the uh, alcohol inks, but you know, I do. I think this one, this one I do a little more with because there was a, I think I, what did I, is this the one that I, nope, maybe not. Yeah, it is because I bring it back into the picture. I think, oh, maybe the next one is. 
There's one that almost looked like a dragonfly. Of course, once it dried, it's not as apparent. But if I doodled on it, you might see it. See, it's just some interesting stuff happening. Oh, see, there he is. That's that's where the... Uh... And then I use this little thing and make some lines. Not wings, just lines. Just because, you know, maybe his wings are flying really... See, he kind of looks like a dragonfly. Isn't it cool? Yep, good. I held it up for you to see. I wasn't sure if I did or not. <laughs> <sighs> Should I say this is mixed media at its finest? Like all the media is right there on the plate. I wouldn't recommend using all these things on your gel plate unless you're like me and you're not afraid to experiment. Experimenting is fun. I was just checking to see what the other side looked like if I want to pick it up, which I do eventually pick it up just to mostly clean the plate. Of course, since then I've played with it some more. Just drowning it in alcohol ink now, spraying it with the alcohol, the TJ solution. I wonder if she'll come up with a new name before I actually post this video. <sighs> right now I'm calling it TJ Solution. Texture Junkies. See? So if you haven't gone, checked her out, you need to go check out Sharon. C-H-E-R-A-N. Sharon at Texture Junkies on YouTube. Look at Isn't that so fun though? And with the me metallics and the different inks and the dark. See, that's the thing. You get these vibrant colors with the inks. More so than you do with paints. And I think that's part of why I love this. And then I love these colors. I love the teals and the oranges. Oh, I think I have an alcohol ink that is a, like a butterscotch, I think. So let's bring more yellows into it. I'm waiting for that to dry so I can pick it up, lift it off. So I hope you have checked out the Maker's creative collab on may 21st that came out on may 21st a uh, lot of creative people doing a lot of fun things i hope you'll go check them out we do a hop um and so there's lots of videos to go watch oh by the way was that the yeah that first prayer i was using i i had thrown away it was the first prayer i ever got i hated it <laughs> and it was just uh, Miha tried to use it the other day for her first time jelly plating and I was like oh give me that that one's not any good then I was using it today I'm like why am I keeping this so I did I threw it away it was just a cheap brayer it's not it's not very good it I don't know it was never really quite in line I don't think I don't know maybe I'll peel it that's it's in the top of the trash I just pulled it out Maybe I'll try to clean it and see if it's any better, but it, I don't think it's ever been like level, like, I don't know, but I ordered myself another soft bear and they have a six inch now, six inch soft bear. I was very excited about that. So let's see, I lift this and then I put one more layer of paint down, which I don't lift, but I will, you will see all of the ones that I created during this uh, video at the very end. And... I don't know. I'm. I, you will. I'm. I'm interested to see what I do. <laughs> I don't know yet what I'm gonna do, but you guys will have seen it. It's such a weird thing to record something that you know is going to be put up much later. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and enjoyed the process and the experimentation and aren't too annoyed with the talking nonstop. Um, but you know, see, look at. I just love the colors. There's lots of fun stuff. As there's a dragonfly. Um, lots of fun stuff happen in these things. So I hope that you all have a delightful day. I hope you will ask the questions. What if? What if I did this? What if I tried that? And then go and do and try and experiment and play and just have fun. Um, yeah, that's it. That's about it. What else can I say for the next 15 seconds? <laughs> you know, maybe I'll just be quiet. Oh, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And comment i love comments i read the comments i try to respond to the comments i at least heart the comments and i appreciate each and every one of you have a delightful day love you